Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. There's some people that just keep making appearances here at Nostalgia Central. People like Shaquille O'Neal, Pee Wee Herman, Abe Vigoda, and of course the Austrian beef sandwich himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. What is it about him anyway? He's so goofy and yet so likable. Such a bad actor and yet so entertaining. You can't stop watching him no matter how hard you try. Well, if there's any movie that can make the Arnold formula seem old and stale, apart from all his other ones, it's Last Action Hero. You'd think the director of Die Hard and Predator would know something about keeping audiences entertained, but in John McTiernan's big budget boar fest, we find that even the most action-packed director can make the most dull, unfunny, and creatively misled of pictures. Now I know what you're thinking, Arnold Schwarzenegger make a bad movie? Surely you jest! Well, let's take a look and see why Last Action Hero is a Last Action Zero. Trust me, it's a lot funnier than most of the jokes in this movie. So we open up with the movie slamming us in the face. Literally. Ow! Violet cinema? We see a bunch of cops lined up around a building where some psycho is holding a bunch of children hostage. Who could possibly save the day? Put that cookie down! It's Arnold Schwarzenegger playing cop Jack Slater, who has to deal with what most movie cops have to deal with, the typical shouting boss. You gotta sit and wait for the real hostage negotiator! The last time you pulled this job did it bug pop going that peek out shit! He then walks across a pointless Tina Turner cameo, thanks Tina, your check's in the mail, as he faces one cop who doesn't want to let him pass. Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. What does that mean? I mean, Arnold's lines are corny, but they usually make sense. Is it because acre sounds like aches? Is it because he kicked him so far it's like the distance of an acre? Are his balls the acres? I mean, what's the joke? Arnold, you can't just say random phrases and expect them to magically be funny. You gotta think about them first. It's like saying, you want to be an astronaut? Tricks are for kids. So he gets to the rooftop where we see the psycho holding the kids hostage. Gave my word of honor he could watch you die. Oh, Stephen Wright, what did you do to yourself? I'm living on a one-way dead-end street. And of course, it just so happens that one of the boys being held hostage is Slater's son. Now lose the gun. All right, I'm unarmed. So let the boy go. Let the boy go. You know, he has a name. Being his father, I thought you might be privy to that information. But it turns out the movie is, well, just that, a movie. Focus! Nick! Being watched by a whiny little protagonist named Danny. Danny is friends with the projectionist at a movie theater played by Robert Prosky. The new Jack Slater opens this weekend at the Odyssey. So being such a good friend, Prosky offers him an advanced screening of the next Jack Slater movie, as long as he finally starts going back to school, which he's been skipping out on quite often. There they show films of a lesser caliber, like Hamlet with Laurence Olivier, the hack. So he goes to heaven. Don't talk, just do it! God! Shakespeare's like the worst writer ever! So Danny starts daydreaming about what the film would be like if Arnold was in it. Stay thy hand, fair prince. Who said I'm fair? Enjoy it while you can, Arnold. That's as close to Hamlet as you're ever going to get. To be or not to be. Not to be. Vanity, thy name is. Insert clever pun here. So he goes home and gets yelled at by his mom right before she has to head out to work. He sits around, watches some TV, does boring stuff, and then finally gets ready to go see the movie. So he gets ready to head out the door when... You alone? Okay. Hello, sudden dark turn. Move it! Oh, tough guy. Do it. Go ahead. Do it. Okay, movie. This is pretty fucked up right here. So he handcuffs him in the bathroom and continues to roam the place. You got junk! No jewelry, no VCR. Maybe I should try robbing rich people. Go fish, amigo. So, after that pointlessly disturbing detour, Danny heads to the movie theater where Prosky is waiting. 
Is the print ready to roll? Oh, just a minute, young man. Aren't we forgetting something? A ticket. And have I got just the one? When I was about your age, Harry Houdini played this theater, and he made a gesture. Houdini did. Like this. And all of a sudden, this was in his hand. And he said uh, to me, you're starting to scare me. This is a magic ticket. It was given to me by the best magician in India, and it was given to him by the best magician in Tibet. It's okay, a passport. Okay, Phil, we already have one strange dark turn. We don't need another. It's a passport to another world. It was mine, and now it's yours. Right! Time for another Sonic Says. Hey kids, strangers may offer you all sorts of things to get you to come with them, like movies, magical tickets, and a lot of other horseshit. But chances are they're just trying to touch your bathing suit area. And that's no good. So if a stranger, especially Robert Prosky, tries to touch your chili dog, just get out of there! So he rips the ticket, which I guess was made out of Tinkerbell blood, as he starts showing the movie for Danny to watch. We see a guy being interrogated by a mob boss, played oddly enough by Anthony Quinn. You want me to make them operate on you? I would make an Anthony Quinn joke, but none of you would get it. We then cut to Jack Slater, entering his home as he sees his old friend conveniently right before he dies. Tony Bovalli and the Torelli mob are joining forces. Frank. Frank. What the hell even killed him? Is watching Arnold do drama really that bad? It's a bomb! Of course! The bomb was wired to the card somehow! Two days to retirement. Did the saxophone just laugh at him? So the chase begins. Higher goons are sent to shoot up Slater when suddenly the magic ticket actually transports Danny into the movie. Whoa! Who the hell are you? I'm Danny Madigan. I'm a kid. You're driving with no hands. I think it's easy if to practice a lot. I bet you didn't know that my butt cheeks have their own license. I is that guy? Cone of phrase. Wait a minute. The bad puns, the voice, the hard rock. I'm in a horrible Schwarzenegger movie! Ah! So he plays chicken with his truck, which somehow explodes before hitting the building, as he crashes into... <laughs> the Benny Hill Show? So the kid is taken back to the police station, where he comes across Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct and Robert Patrick from Terminator 2. Jack! Did you see that? You know, movie, I'm not sure if you know this, but, um, cameos have to make sense. Just because those two people were in movies doesn't mean it necessarily makes sense to have them in your movie. I mean... It's like having a cartoon cat running around all over the place. What? What the hell is that? Are you serious? Why is there a cartoon cat there? That doesn't make any sense. He's supposed to be back on duty. He was only suspended for a month. No, movie. No. There is no reason a cartoon cat should be there. And it's like saying Little Richard's in the movie. Are you a big time fan of Jack Slater films? I've enjoyed it. Jean-Claude Van Damme. I will never miss the premiere for a second. Jim Belushi. I just want to be there when it happens. MC Hammer. Look, it deal's done, right? Humphrey Bogart. He's looking at you, kid. Chevy Chase and Damon Wayans walking side by side. What is going on? Why are there so many pointless random cameos? Am I in the Twilight Zone? I mean, movie, just because you can't have someone in your film doesn't mean you should. It's like having... No. No. I mention that person's name, they might spontaneously jump out of somebody's anus. Let's just keep watching the movie and be done with it. So, I guess the joke behind some of these strange cameos is that every cop at the station is supposed to be delightfully mismatched. You know, like those buddy cop movies you see all the time. So one cop might be teamed up with a rabbi, a chubby slob will be teamed up with a neat freak. And yes, one cop gets hooked up with a cartoon cat. 
I'm getting a flea bath later. Join me? While the idea could be kind of clever, it still makes no sense. Why are all these mismatched cops in this buddy movie? I mean, you don't see Mel Gibson and Danny Glover teaming up with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Yet. But the point still remains. Buddy movies just deal with one pair of buddies, not five or six. No other movies work that way. No one likes a smart ass. So Slater gets called in to be yelled at by the chief as the kid keeps pointing out all the cliches pretty much before the audience can. I'm willing to bet that everyone has a 555 number. There are no unattractive women here. I was just in a real police station. And this is much nicer. Kid, leave the plot holes to me, okay? It's my job. So he goes into a blockbuster video store trying to prove that there's an actor called Arnold Schwarzenegger and that he's made dozens of hit films. What he finds, I have to admit, is kind of funny. No, it isn't possible. Yeah, you know, I'll be back a little after the Easter baby for you, you know, and uh, I just want to go the distance. Yeah. I mean, where are the ordinary, everyday women? They don't exist because this is a movie! No, this is California. And one day I will govern it! La, 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 la. So we get some scenes of them talking, then some the more scenes of them talking, Patience. and then some more scenes of them talking. The entire case. You just revolutionized the entire <sighs> You know, guys, speaking isn't exactly Schwarzenegger's strong point. Can't you give him a gun or a bomb? Or even a free suit? I don't care! Just give him something! Finally, they're going to visit the bad guy and his deadly assassin. Make no mistake, they are exceptionally well trained. <laughs> Movie, are you on drugs? So yeah, they don't really get any answers and they just decide to leave. Oh good. How wonderful. Thank you for that, Booby. I really thought you were gonna fuck up there and do something exciting for a minute. Please, tell me there's another long, drawn-out scene of just two people talking. Yes! Yes! I am so happy to think we could be wasting our time with gunfire, explosions, and exciting chase scenes! But no! An uninteresting crime plot and a whiny little brat with girly hair is far more interesting! Hurrah! Her fuckity raw! Blow something up! Uh, or a hot chick, that, that helps too. Daddy, help me! <laughs> so Slater drops off the key with his incredibly attractive daughter as he drives off to have a flashback. He remembers back to his son, who it turns out was murdered twice, for some reason, as the movie's editor decided, as they're suddenly approached by the assassin. <laughs> you have a hair on her head. Stop! Wow, that'd be really threatening in fifth grade. Oh, for God's sake, stop screaming and do something! Okay. Okay, lady, I don't think you understand the purpose of screaming. You scream when you're in trouble. You're not the damsel from the Dover Boys cartoon. But Slater arrives to help. Hi. Alright, that's one cool scene. So they have a little fight as the bad guys ride off in the car. But Danny grabs a girl's bike, which belongs to the grown-up daughter, as he heads them off at the pass. Chicken it is. Kid, what the hell is wrong with you? You're on a girl's bike, they're in a fucking car! Do the math! This is gonna work. It's a movie. I'm a good guy. This has got to work. Oh shit! I'm a comedy psychic. And a rather unfunny one that we'd like to see get pulverized. E.T. Bud Liars. So the kid, still thinking the whole movie bit is funny, tries to prove to Slater again that this is all a film. Say this. Grow up. Just say this one word. You can't. You can't possibly say it. Because this movie is PG-13. Too bad they're not online, fuck shit, titty cock. So we go back to the police station where, once again, we get a screaming fest from the angry chief. You're 
bitch. You better get in this bitch. Go down the bitch. Go down the bitch. Jesus Christ, he's turning into the micro machine guy. This is the micro machine man presenting the most rigid miniature motorcade of micro machines. This one has dramatic details, perfect trims, defender silence, precision tape jobs, rushing wheels, micro machine cars, the best variety, including Lamborghini, Grand Am, Corvette, Rover, Ford, Blazer. And by the way, yes, that is steam coming out of his ears. Did I mention that this movie was PG-13? As in, no one above the age of 13 would find this funny? Give me your badge! So Slater is laid off, which of course means they're gonna stop the crime boss on their own. Somehow they find out that this body at a funeral is going to explode with some sort of nerve gas. I don't know, just play along. As Slater and Danny are confronted by his old partner played by F. Murray Abraham. Sorry, Jack. I didn't want it to go down this way. But I haven't played the good guy in the movie yet, so... Here we are! Please! Man, are you an idiot? You made the classic movie mistake! Don't explain so much! Kid, we have to get shut up! Words. But Quinn gets the drop on the kid as they chain our two heroes together. I have to go and establish my alibi. <laughs> Arrivederci. I look forward to you totally forgetting this performance. <laughs> But they're saved by the cartoon cat. Yep, a Schwarzenegger movie where he's saved by a fucking cat. As he goes up to the funeral and tries to get the body away from the people. This man's not dead! Can somebody help this man here? Look, an elephant! No! Out! So while Danny is probably wondering why he couldn't have gotten transported into Debbie Does Dallas, he manages to operate a crane that helps Slater get off the roof in one of the strangest slow-mo shots ever. This is what I like to call the Wily e. Coyote. I do not actually fall until I realize there is nothing supporting me. This style of slapstick comedy was originated in the 1940s. Warner Brothers was beginning to make its mark in- ah! I was just about to tell them about the golden age of cinema animation! I eat you! I eat you all! So they save the day while the assassin guy gets the magic ticket and starts to discover exactly what he can do with it. I can move through parallel worlds, in and out. And steal whatever I want. But not before Slater politely knocks at the door. Avon calling. Don't move. All right, Slater, I'll go quietly. The hell you will. We're going to have an exciting climax and a thrilling conclusion. This is for my daughter's black eye! Usually when I do that, it leaves a whore. There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! So Slater and Danny travel into the real world, where Slater discovers things don't work quite like he thought they would. Here's another explosion for your movie, kid. The word. Not one word. My acting, it doesn't seem to fly here. Nobody finds it credible, they just laugh at my accent! So just as you're saying to yourself, shouldn't this movie be over by now? The film prattles on mostly as Slater just mopes around and faces the reality that he's a fictional character. Gives you nightmares the rest of your life. But you're fictional, so who cares? I'm sorry, but I don't find it so new and exciting to discover that my whole life has been a damn movie. Yeah, this is the real world. With magic tickets that suck you into realms of fantasy. It's an everyday occurrence. So through a long, 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 long series of boring events, they finally realize that the assassin is going to attack at Arnold Schwarzenegger's premiere of the new Jack Slater movie. Benedict is gonna kill Schwarzenegger. Oh, Schwarzenegger? Who's oh, Slater? Bingo. Bingo! Except, no, that makes no sense. But screw it, let's just get to the climax of this sucker. So the assassin goes and brings back that Stephen Wright guy as he plans to use him to kill Schwarzenegger the actor. Rip, Rip, come here. What did Brett bring you here tonight? Uh, I just wanted to tell people that they can save a lot of money by switching to Geico. Even a caveman can do it. <laughs> by the way, this is where we get a lot of those weak cameos I mentioned before. They walk in front of the camera and then wonder what they did to deserve such piss poor treatment. Well, we all know what Van Damme did, but I digress. So he tries to kill Arnold and fails, but he kidnaps the kid and takes him to the rooftop. Gee, for the real world being nothing like a movie we've just seen, this is in fact looking a lot like a movie we've just seen. It's now between you and me, so let the boy go. And we've played this nerve before, haven't we, Jack? You're just angry because I have 12 more teeth than the average human being. Slater defeats the psycho, but then gets hunted down by the assassin, who of course, reveals his evil plan. You want Dracula? I'll fetch him. Dracula? I can get King Kong. Have a surprise party for that old Hitler. 
Hannibal Lecter can do the catering. All I have to do is snap my fingers and they'll be here. That's actually a pretty cool plan. Holy smokes, I can't wait to see the possibilities that come out of this. Of course, just ruined the only cool premise in the entire film. Fucking cock blocker. You think you're funny, don't you? So Arnold gets the gun and shoots the bad guy who somehow explodes. Again, real world, isn't it fascinating? As the ticket falls and actually releases the Grim Reaper from the Seventh Seal. Because, yeah, everyone who sees Last Action Hero is gonna know what the hell the Seventh Seal is. As Danny tries to take an injured Slater and get him back into the movie. Why? Because in the film world, his injury would only be considered a flesh wound, and apparently not kill him. So Death, played oddly enough by Ian McKellen, gives Danny some helpful advice. If I were you... I might be looking for the other half of the ticket. One ticket to rule them all, one ticket to fight- Oh, forget it. So he finds the ticket and gets him back into the movie, where the doctors fix him up so he can go back to duty. The kid has had an amazing adventure. He reunites with the Prosky character. And they all live happily ever after. There is just one tiny detail that they overlooked. The fucking Grim Reaper is on the loose! I mean, we never saw him go back into the movie, and we even saw him kill a few people in the real world! Isn't this, I don't know, a big fucking deal? Maybe it was meant to be saved for the sequel, Last Action Hero 2, Death Takes a Holiday. But luckily we never saw it, because this film tanked at the box office. And why should it? It's dull. I mean, it is so boring. Granted, some of the ideas have promise, and there are one or two jokes that work, but mostly it's a very clumsy, boring action film. My advice? I'd rather listen to that Put That Cookie Down remix a million times before ever watching this movie again. I'm in the south, you could have never remembered, so you don't have to. Put that cookie down.